applied to Sherman Baptist Church down here between somewhere outside of Bruce, Mississippi, <laughs> out in the country. Anyway, uh, I want to start off this morning, like this is our Bible class. We're going to do a little Bible class session here this morning and, and uh, go over the little handout that I passed out to y'all. But what I want to do, if y'all will, go to Psalms 139, 23, and 24. And what we're going to do is what I call uh, the double barrel spiritual warfare weapon of God, which is the prayer and the Word of God. So we're going to start our class this morning with a prayer, and I want y'all to do it like a marriage ceremony, like we've kind of rehearsed a little bit. You know, you, before you get married, you have to have a little dress rehearsal, so we've been at a little dress rehearsal. So if y'all will, let's look at, uh, and I'm going to be reading out of this uh, Life Recovery Bible, the NLT translation, which is the one that we use. Uh, around the country in our recovery programs. But if y'all will, repeat this prayer after me. <coughs> Verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Search, Search me, O God, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you. Point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. Y'all heard that song where he leads me, I will follow. So one of the things that I figured out a while back, and I got to be reminded of it, is I don't have to figure this stuff out anymore. It's already been figured out. I just got to follow what's been laid out. Stay focused, do the next right thing. Or in biblical terms, I need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness above all else and everything else is going to fall in place. But I need to do that every day as soon as I get up. I need to start seeking God and seeking his ways. So I get in the habit, and in, in my habit in the morning is when I wake up, I ask God to direct my thinking and I get real specific with God about my motives. I think motives is, has got a whole lot to do with differentiating between the truth and the false, what my priorities are, what they should be or what they shouldn't be, and what my ambitions are, what they should be, or maybe what they shouldn't be, from the worldly to the spiritual. And so that's a big deal. So I ask God to direct my thinking. I ask especially but that my thinking be divorced from self-pity. Because how many of us have a hard time not feeling sorry for ourselves from time to time based on our circumstances, based on the situations around those circumstances? And the Bible says give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So the implication is if we don't give thanks in all circumstances, then we're running on self-will and not on God's will. And it's real easy to get thrown off balance throughout the course of the day when new event, new activities come our way. People say something that maybe is inappropriate or at least we think it is. Or people do things that maybe they shouldn't do. And the next thing you know, we're getting bent out of shape because we start focusing in on their weaknesses, their shortcomings. And then, as a rule, if we're not careful, we'll start grumbling and complaining because we're operating in the three-dimensional world, which is mind, body, emotions, because we're operating on the instincts. And I believe the nature of darkness power is the instincts. And the book of Jude talks about it big time. Right before it goes into the revelations, it talks about the people that's causing the divisions among us are grumblers and complainers and fault finders because they operate in, in the natural room. So we got a human point of view versus the spiritual point of view. We got a human objective versus 
spiritual objectives. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So if y'all will, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 13, and if you got one of these Bibles, it's on page 1471. And the reason we do that, we, the reason we uh, we settled in on this Bible is number one, this Bible is the number one recovery Bible in the world. And um, number two is a lot of people we work with don't know anything about the Bible. So we try to meet them where they are and we try to give them the page number and we try to show them what's, what's really written in the Word of God. And I tell people all the time, I got my point of view and you got yours, but I'm searching for God's. Always. And have been for a long time. I've been praying for wisdom, insight, and understanding for since I was 33 years old, and that's over 33 years ago, to let y'all know a little bit about how old I am. But here's what, I, here's what I've learned. The more you learn, the more you realize how little you know compared to what there is to learn. And at one time, believe it or not, I, threw, I, I thought I knew a whole And compared to what I did know, I had learned a lot. But I believe it takes, I believe a lot of people don't realize how little they know compared to what there is to learn. Until you become aware of that and you start reflecting back over your life. <coughs> And you start seeing how much you've been able to grow when you thought you was already grown. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about besides me? I know you do. <laughs> okay, and, and, see, and, and in simplicity, God is constantly disclosing stuff to us. When we follow in His path, He gives us revelations. When we follow in the other paths, we don't get those revelations as a rule. We get blocked off from the sunlight of the Spirit. So if y'all will, on page 1471, what we're going to do, using the double barrel spiritual weapons, power of prayer and the Word of God, what we want to do is pray that God would help us be what He called us to be and not be what He don't want us to be. And one of the big scriptures we're going to read is, Love keeps no record of wrongs. And so many people have a record book of how somebody hurt them when they was down here. And then somebody else hurt them up here. And then somebody else hurt them here. And then somebody else hurt them here. And the list goes on. And somebody hurt us yesterday with, that, with a cutting remark or whatever. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so don't, like the old saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's one of the biggest lies I've ever heard. Because the words are the carriers. And we're either going to speak wholesome talk or we're going to speak unwholesome talk. And let's cut the gray area out with the rationalization and the self-justification, the alibis and excuses. I'm behaving the way I'm behaving because of what somebody else did. And the only way to do that is quit looking at things from a purely human point of view and sort of evaluating others from a spiritual point of view. And pray the scripture in so we can bring something healthy to the table. So if y'all will, let's, let's pray in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Same way we did, did the other one, it's like a marriage ceremony. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat the words. And we've already had to dress rehearsal. Lord, help me to be patient and kind. Lord, help me to be patient and kind. Help me not to be jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. Help me not to be jealous, boastful, proud, or rude. Help me not to demand my own way. Help me not to demand my own way. Help me not to be irritable. Help me not to be irritable. Help me to keep no record of being wronged. Help me keep no record of being wronged. Help me not to rejoice about injustice. But help me rejoice whenever the truth wins out. Lord, help me to never give up. Lord, help me to never give up. Help me to never lose faith. Help me to never lose faith. Help me to always be hopeful. Help me to always be hopeful. And help me to endure through every circumstance. And help me to endure through every circumstance. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful deal? See how simple that is? See how deep it is? 
How many of us, how many of us get jealous, boastful, proud, or rude? You're not going to talk to me like that. Or I'm going to talk to you any way I want to because I am who I am. Y'all understand that mindset? Mm -hmm. when a lot of times we boast about our accomplishments. Or we boast about how prideful we are. And we get jealous of what other people get to do that we don't get to do. And we start comparing our lifestyle with somebody else's lifestyle and say, I wish I had it going on like so-and-so's got it going on. But here I am, poor little me. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. And then what happens is, how many times do we make requests but they're really demands? And we ask some, somebody to do something and they don't do it. And if they do do it, they don't do it the way I told them to do it. Y'all understand that? As I saw it in my way of thinking. And so, why didn't you do it the way I told you to do it? If you'd have just done it like this, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. Y'all understand that? And what happens is we start grumbling and complaining about what I call God's handiwork. And he sees the big picture and our view is very limited. But so many times we play his role. We try to set up the stage. We try to tell everybody what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And then when they don't do it the way we said to do it, we get tore up from the floor up. And when we get tore up from the floor up, it's time for us to get a check up from the neck up and learn how to stop, pause, and pray when we get agitated or when we get doubtful so it won't turn into anger and fear. And as God for the right thought or the right answer, actions and then constantly remind ourselves it's bigger than anything I can see. <coughs> I'm not running the show. And then humbly send ourselves many times each day. I think this is one of the healthiest practices I've been able to develop. Thy will not mind be done. Then I'm in a whole lot less danger of being excited and worried and anger and self-pity and making foolish decisions. And the truth of the matter is, when I get in the habit of doing that, I become much more effective for God and not letting the devil outsmart me because I'm becoming more and more aware of his schemes. And I'm realizing that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the spiritual forces of evil operating inside the flesh and blood, or it's the nature of evil, or the nature of darkness. Just like what Paul says in Romans chapter seven, the thing that I do, I don't want to do, and the thing that I don't want to do, I do. But it's not me, it's that sinful nature operating inside me. And here's the deal. When the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, the big word is I in. Lean not to your own understanding. There it is again, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will show you the path to take or he will direct your steps. And he says in Ephesians 6, 10, 11, and the first part of 12. Finally be strong, there's that word again, in the Lord, and in his mighty power, there's that word again, put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against all the strategies of the devil for we wrestle not or we struggle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But if we're looking at it in the natural, then our struggle is going to be against flesh and blood. Because we're looking at everything from a human point of view. Second Corinthians 5, 16 through 17, it says, we no longer evaluate people from a human point of view, even though we once viewed Christ that way, 
how well we know him differently now. So we want to transform from the worldly way of thinking and doing to the spiritual way of thinking and doing. And so we have to learn how to break the old habits, the old unhealthy habits, looking at things in the natural, being conformed to the patterns of the world, to the customs of the world, and let God transform us by developing some new healthy habits. So if we, if, if we don't break those old unhealthy habits and develop some new healthy habits, then we're going to be sick, spiritually. And one of the red flags for me is if I make a cutting remark or a little smart remark towards somebody, I realize and recognize, recognize today that I'm not spiritually fit. How did I get to the point that I would make a cut remark towards somebody or grit my teeth or clench my fist? Y'all ever had them committee meetings riding down the road and there'd be nobody in the car but you? <laughs> Next thing you know, you start drifting, you start, you start pondering a twisted or broken relationship and you start thinking about what they said and you start thinking about what they did and the next thing you know, you got a clenched fist and you got gritty teeth. I heard one woman said she gritting her teeth so hard that she broke her apart. And it wasn't nobody in it, wasn't nobody around but her. You know anything about that, son? <laughs> <laughs> we all do. You know why? Because we don't give thanks in all circumstances. You know what happens when we don't give thanks in all circumstances? We're not in God's will. We in self will. You know what the next verse says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 and 19? It says, don't stop all the Spirit's fire. Do not stop all the Spirit. Because what happens is we drift off into worry, remorse, morbid reflections, and we start feeding our mind to all that poison. And the more you feed your mind that poison, the more you become the poison. And the more you become the poison, y'all get your little hand out out. Give me one of them. Got more. This little handout, we got this little handout on our on our little um, on our website. We we building a website. It's in the baby stages. And we got some stuff on YouTube called Living Branches. And when you and when you pull it up, you'll see this symbol. <coughs> this is the symbol that's on our website and on the uh, uh, YouTube channel. We may even put this one on there. I don't know what's going on how good it is once our editor uh, edited it. <laughs> and uh, we don't have much of an editor, so it'll probably go on there as is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we're, we're still learning and we're still growing. And we're still country boys. Okay? But anyway, if y'all look at the, uh, look up there at the top where it says uh, power of choice. Y'all see that? And on both sides of that is motives. 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 What motivates you to say and do what you say and do? And see if it ain't got something to do with your priorities or your plans. Now how many times do your plans go the way you think they ought to go on a daily basis. When's the last time your plans went exactly the way you thought they should have went? Maybe in your mama's womb, okay? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't really know, but I don't know of a day that my plans ever go the way I think they ought to go. I'm always getting something, something's always coming up, new events, different situation, different circumstances, plan on going here, get delayed here, plan on going there, get delayed over here. Next thing you know, it's three o'clock, none of my plans are done, and I'm way, in my mind, I'm way behind the eight ball, and how am I gonna catch up? Well, you, I mean, if the, if, you know, if the water's flowed under the bridge, it's flowed under the bridge, you can't unscramble, scramble the egg, and, and, and you can't go back 
you can't go back and get that time that's already passed by this day. So let's just start right here, get plumbed back up, do the next right thing, treat people the way we want to be treated, and not get tore up from the floor up. But if we do, let's get us a check up from the neck up and stop, pause, praise, ask God for the right thought or the right action. And here's the big one. Constantly remind yourself, you're not running anything. God's revealed that to me. I've been, I've been to meetings before, and especially business meetings. John, I don't know if y'all know anything about some of them, but I imagine some of you do. But anyway, and things didn't go the way I thought they should have went. And, and that little voice of God, that my God conscience, it one audible voice that says, Settle down, son. You're not running this deal. I am. Just do what you've been trained to do and watch me show out. And then a peace comes over you that can't be described because you know who's in charge of the vessel. That's right. And you know who's not in charge. <laughs> Does that make sense? Amen. So, amen. All right, now, look at line two. By daily using the method of the coaches, Y'all see that? We take our personal inventory. Did y'all read? Did y'all hear that? We take our personal inventory. Let me say it again. We take our personal inventory. Instead of taking everybody else's inventory <laughs> and squandering hours that might have been worthwhile and quit grumbling and complaining and gossiping about what everybody else is doing. Did you hear what so-and-so did? You know what so-and-so did? And next thing you know, after you go through a few years and a few miles, it ain't nothing compared to what so-and-so did because the message is done got garbled and distorted. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets back around to so-and-so, man, somebody's mad because so-and-so said this. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Amen. We take it, we take a, we take our personal inventory and set right any new mistakes as we clean up the past. How I many of y'all got some wreckage we need to clean up? How I many of y'all believe there's some wrongs that we need to make right? Amen. Broken relationship, barriers, walls, standing between me and a family member, standing between me and a friend, standing between me and my relationship with God. How I many of y'all believe God wants to sweep those barriers and those, he wants to tear those walls down? How I many of y'all believe the nature of darkness wants, to, wants more barriers and bigger walls? Yeah. Thicker walls. Our motives play a major role in helping us determine what our real priorities have been and presently are, what our real ambitions have been and presently are, what our real objectives have been and presently are, what our real goals have been and presently are, how our real values have been and presently are, and desires have been and are. Y'all see that? This simple method can help us break old unhealthy habits and develop new ones, develop new healthy habits. Practicing daily to spot, admit, and correct. Y'all see that? Watch out in your own candy camera, brother. <laughs> y'all look at the next table. Practicing daily. How many of y'all believe that we need to practice daily? How many of y'all believe that practice is a big word? How many of y'all believe it's 24 hours a day? Today is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Okay? Practicing daily to spot, admit, and correct our mistakes <coughs> will help us grow into maturity. Now, who wants us to grow into maturity? God does. Who don't want us to grow into maturity? It's a no-brainer. I mean, it's so simple, we miss it. You see what I'm saying? And so, lessons learned today can be carried over into the mall. So if we review our film, take a spot check inventory throughout the course of the day, learn how to stop, pause, and pray, when, not if, 
agitated or doubtful. Ask God for the right thought or the right action, which means if we're agitated or doubtful, we're not thinking right, and we probably can do something stupid. You know what I'm saying? We fix to say something we shouldn't say, and we fix to do something we shouldn't do, because we're trying to run something, and it ain't going our way, and we need to relax and take it easy, be still, and know that God is God, and constantly remind ourselves that we're just a player on the stage, that he's the one, he's the orchestrator. And he's been orchestrating his plan every second of every day ever since he put that plan in action. How many of y'all believe that? Mm -hmm. And how many of us have gone away and complained about his plan? We're not going to get into that too much. I say this, one good look in the mirror ought to be convincing enough. Amen. But don't take a brain surgeon to figure it out. I mean, you can go to, and I don't, I don't want to discredit any of them. You can go to doctors and the psychologists and the psychiatrists and all this stuff and let them evaluate what all is going on. But I say this, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can reflect back and review your film and see what you see. So when I go to these places, I present myself as being a life spiritual coach and we go into the locker room and right now we're going to review the first half of our game. How many of y'all believe that's a healthy practice? Mm -hmm. Now look right down. Le lessons learned today can be carried over to tomorrow. Y'all see that? On the right side, personal inventory, y'all see that? Power of choice, y'all see that? Discipline, y'all see that? How many of y'all believe all coaches believe in discipline? How many of y'all believe God believes in discipline? How many of y'all believe God is love? More than there's love, there's discipline. Amen. Proverbs 12, 1 says, to learn you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. How many of us have played on that team of being stupid and stubborn and hate correction? You're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it. Once you mind your own business. You know what I'm saying? That's the attitude that the devil wants us to have. Look at the right side of the spiritual ledger, credits. We can, we, what we want to do is increase our credits. We don't want to decrease them. And the way we increase our credits in simplicity is we learn lessons today and we carry those lessons over into tomorrow. Words and actions. And if we learn lessons today and carry those over into tomorrow and duplicate the process Monday, then we carry, we learn more lessons tomorrow and carry them over into Tuesday and duplicate the process. It's so simple, we miss it. Carry it over into Wednesday. This time next week, we're going to have a bunch of lessons learned this week alone in a seven day stretch. Now, if we don't learn lessons, if we don't learn lessons today with our words and our actions, look over on the left side. Still, personal inventory, power of choice, undisciplined. I mean, y'all believe that the, the nature of darkness or the nature of evil or the, the devil don't want us to be disciplined. So if he don't want us to be disciplined by God, he wants us to be undisciplined, right? So I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it and how I want to do it, and it ain't none of your business. Just mind your own business. You won't be minding mine. Y'all know about that statement? I've heard that a long time, ain't y'all? <laughs> Spiritual ledger, debits. Those debits are going to increase if we remain undisciplined and don't learn the lessons today. We're not going to have anything over to, to carry over until tomorrow except some more mistakes. Some more mistakes. Some more mistakes. Y'all with me? Or decrease. And what we want to do in simplicity is we want to decrease the left side and want to increase the right side. Now look up here above that um, Johnny's head. Y'all see Johnny's head right there in the middle? <laughs> Look up there above Johnny's head. Where it says human point of view and spiritual point of view. This is about spiritual awareness. What we feed our mind, our focus on, we become. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. Your mind is like a garden and your thoughts are the seeds. Now you can plant flowers, but you can book them weeds are going to pop up in that garden. And if you don't expose those weeds to the sun, they're going to take over your garden. 
Your mind is like a gardening and your thoughts are the seeds. You can plant flowers or you can plant weeds. A lot of, a lot of us have been planting a lot of weeds for a long period of time and don't have much fruit. <laughs> You know, because they done took over a pea patch and everything else, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. What we become, we transmit. How many of y'all believe we all transmitters? Mm -hmm. We all either going to transmit good or we're going to transmit evil. Let's get out of the gray air. It, it's either God's way or the ways of the world or the ways of the devil, okay? What we become, we transmit, and what we transmit, we receive, all the way the Bible puts it, in Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. So whatever nature you reaping, whatever nature you sowing your seeds in, is the nature you reap your harvest in. And if you keep on doing what you've always done, you're going to keep on getting what you've always gotten. If you like what you've been getting, keep doing what you've been doing. But if you don't like it, there is a better way. And right action is the key to good living. And if you don't take the right action, faith without works is dead. If you don't take the right actions, you're not going to get the desired results. It's like sitting up at Memphis International Airport waiting for a ship to come in. It ain't going to happen. But we expect it to happen because we've been praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Well, you can go out here and plant a good garden and you can stand there on that front porch and watch that garden grow and sit there and be praying that God would help you have a good clean garden. But if you don't go out there on your hands and knees and pick them weeds up and expose them to the sun and get, that, get on the backside of a hoe handle, you understand what I'm saying? You take action. We gotta take action. How many of y'all been making some bad choices for a long time? Because mm -hmm. of the habits that we've been that we've developed from early on. We want what we want when we want it. Like a little child in a candy store. They don't get that candy bar. And starts throwing a snot slinging, blind running pin. <laughs> and we can see it in the little child. But we have a hard time seeing that little child in a grown up body. Especially somebody that's been reborn. And they may have got reborn a long time ago, but they still own that spiritual milk. And then growing into maturity. And the proof that we're still infants in Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, is we, there's still jealousy and quarreling going on among us. So, here's our first test. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourself. All right, now, y'all just stay with me. Stay with me. Y'all don't have to worry about it. Just write it down and go back to it. I'm fixing to give us, I'm fixing to give us an example of what all this stuff, we're fixing to summarize all this in a nutshell. So if the Bible says examine yourself to see if your faith is genuine, test yourself, here's our test. Y'all ready for your test? Mm -hmm. When you woke up this morning, what was on your mind? Did you start praying to God right off the bat? Some of us are in the habit of doing that and some of us aren't. If you aren't, you pray right now that God will help you get in the habit of start talking with Him as soon as you wake up and you get real specific about your motives, your priorities, and your ambitions. So here's the deal. Reflect back and see 
what kind of thought mindset you had this morning when you woke up, what was on your mind, worries, anxieties, frustration, fears, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. Well, the truth of the matter is, yesterday's gone, we don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow or not. If we do a good job of living today and then tomorrow comes for us, then the chances are we'll do a good job when it arrives. So no need to worry about it because the Bible says don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Today's got enough trouble to go from. So after you woke up this morning, what was the next thing you did? And what was the next thing you did? And reflect back and see what kind of words started coming out of your mouth. I don't know about y'all, but I've had some slight disagreements on the way to the church house with some family members. Have y'all ever had any slight disagreements on the way to the church house? <laughs> Have you ever got to the church house and then you started having some more disagreements because there's no so-and-so in here. I just can't stand to be in the room with her. I can't stand to be in the room with him. I'm not coming to this church house no more. <laughs> Y'all know about that attitude? Bring it all the way up to where we start walking in that door and see how our mindset has changed from this morning to present time. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Amen. Okay, now here's the tough test. No, I'm not going to give you the tough test yet. Let's go back to yesterday. All the way up to the time you went to bed, what was on your mind? Go all the way back to the time you woke up and use the method of the coaches to start reviewing your film and see how you played the game yesterday. And get honest with yourself and ask yourself, whose team did I really play on yesterday? Was I a player on God's team? Or was I still playing on that other team? Most of the time. And I'm not taking any way, but I'm gonna say this before we go any further. Colossians 1, 13 says, Basically, I'm going to put it in my turn. Praise God, we've been transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light of what Christ did for us on the cross. But the transformation is not taking place in a whole lot of people's life. And we remain little bitty babies because we're still grumbling, complaining, and fault binding. Does that make sense? Amen. So review your day yesterday. Then go back to Friday afternoon when you got off work. What kind of activities were you involved in from Friday afternoon to the present point in time? Now the real test, my favorite test, is on Sunday night. And we're going to have a film of the last 48 hours. From Friday afternoon, starting in September, when the ball game started. It's my favorite time to do it, when the football season starts. <coughs> we start seeing what's on our mind, a lot of times all week long, because of how we just got beat, or how we won that game last Saturday. Or how stupid the coach was yesterday. And he took, should have took this player out. And that referee made such a bad call. If it hadn't been a bad call, man, we'd have won that game. It's like that's the biggest priority it is. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Social distinctions, petty rivalries, and jealousies because of a color of a uniform, because of a playing field that somebody plays on, either the school up north, or the middle school, or the road tide road, or the school down south. 
or the school over in, in that state over here. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm talking about? And so let's use the method of the coaches. Let's learn from our mistakes. Take advantage of them and quit letting them take advantage of us. Are we going to take a break? We're going to come back in here and do our regular worship service or whatever, and then we're going to continue this deal in the second half of our service this morning. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. Okay. We'll take a little short break and then see if anybody's going to come in here at 11, and then we'll do our little prayer list and our time.